AI-generated images have recently exploded over the internet. You type in what you want to see and boom, AI makes the image for you. Let's take a look at how easy it is to make art with these AI tools. There are three main AI text to image generators, DAL-E2, Midjourney, and Stable Diffusion. DAL-E2 was made by Elon Musk's OpenAI and it was the first AI generator that captured the headlines. However, as of today, it is still not fully open to the public you have to join a waitlist. Midjourney operates through a Discord server and it is open to the public, but it does not give photorealistic results like DALI 2 and Stable Diffusion. My favorite at this moment is Stable Diffusion since they made it incredibly easy for beginners to try it out. Stable Diffusion is open source, so you can run it for free on your own machine, but to start there are two better ways. First is Lexica, which is online library of images that have been already created with Stable Diffusion. This is a great place to start since it is completely free and you can search for the types of images that you're interested in. For example, I love New York City, so let's see what type of images are there. While you are browsing the images, start paying attention to the prompts that were used to make these pictures. Make a note of the specific prompts that generate the image you like. Writing the right prompts will generate the most interesting art. Now let's go and make our own images. You don't need any coding knowledge for this at all and the image generation is done on the cloud. Head over to Dream Studio and open an account or log in with your Gmail or Discord. Once you sign in, you will get 200 free credits. This is important, while Stable Diffusion is open source and free to run on your own machine, if you want to run it on the cloud, you have to pay for the compute power. But the prices are very reasonable. 200 credits is enough for 200 free simple picture generations. The more compute power the generation uses, the more credits it will cost. If you want to make more art, $10 buys you another 1000 credits. Before you start using up credits, it's good to review the prompt guide, which can be found right here in the left hand side. So let's click on that. And this is a really good overview on how to structure your prompts to get the most out of Stable Diffusion. The first part of the prompt is what they call the raw prompt. This uh, tells Stable Diffusion what you want in the image. So for example, you can say panda, a warrior with a sword or skeleton. So this tells Stable Diffusion what kind of object do you want in the image. So another example would be, for example, landscape or uh, cityscape. If you use just raw prompts, the resulting images are generally not that good. So you definitely need to give a, a stable diffusion a little bit more information to get the uh, most creative images. So the second part is what they call style. Here you specify what kind of image you would you like. So for example, you can say realistic, which would be like a photo-like image. You can say oil painting pencil drawing or concept art. For each of these styles, you can specify in a few different ways. For example, for the realistic style, you can say, for example, a photo of panda, or second, you can say a photograph of panda, third, you can say panda hyper-realistic, or four, you can say panda realistic. So there's lots of different ways you can say uh, the same thing to Stable Diffusion. The third part of the prompt is you can specify an artist. Since Stable Diffusion was trained on publicly available data, it is uh, familiar with all the famous artists in the world uh, of past and present. So you can specify what kind of a style you, would you like. You can say Pablo Picasso or Picasso. And here they give you a few examples for uh, portraits. There are a few different artists for all paintings, pencil drawings and landscape art. To get the most creative images, it's good to mix and match different artists. Uh, so Stable Diffusion can give you something unique that uh, hasn't been seen before. Also, it's good to do your own research on artists to find something new so you don't use um, just the famous ones like Picasso, you can uh, use something more obscure. And the last part of the prompt is what they call finishing touches. I would call it extras. Here is where you can get really creative and add lots of different extra information. For, for example, psychedelic, cinematic, geometric, cyberpunk. The more uh, prompts you give it, the more uh, creative images you generally get. Uh, so don't be uh, afraid to include lots of uh, additional information. Some people write a whole paragraph in the prompt section, so don't be afraid to uh, give it a lot of information. Earlier I said that the number of credits that are used per image depends on your settings. So let's go through that real quick. You can specify the width and the height of the image, and the bigger the image you make, the more credits will be used. So you can make the width all the way to 1024 pixels, and then it uses almost four credits. And the same goes with height. So if you have 1000 by 1000 image, you use almost 10 credits. A good idea is to first make images at uh, 512 by 512. So you only use one credit per image. And then once you get an image that you really like, then you can increase the resolution. The CFG scale specifies on how close the resulting image will be to your prompt. So the higher you make it, the closer it will be to your prompt. But if you make it too high, it might be a little bit too rigid. So the lower you make it, the more creative the image might get. 
Uh, generally, the value of seven is uh, the default and that works uh, generally quite well. The number of steps specifies on how much uh, compute power does the model uses to generate your image. If you make this really high, uh, it tends to result in a kind of overcooked, overprocessed images. So it's good to keep it at 50. Also, the higher you make this, the more credits you'll use per image. So it's good to keep this at 50. And then if you feel like uh, your uh, image is not intricate enough, then you can increase it later. Number of images is pretty self-explanatory. The more images uh, you make, the more credits will use. So this is credits per image. So if you increase the number of images uh, from one, then you'll use uh, multiples of this number. The sampler I keep at default, which is the KLMS. The model I use the latest, which is stable diffusion version 1.5. And seed is pretty interesting. So once you get an image that you really like, you can copy that seed number in here and then you can make only slight modification to the image. Okay, so let's make some images. So uh, let's do New York, photorealistic, underwater, climate change, intricate, geometric. Well, that's not that great. When you download the image, it will put the seed number of the image in the file name, which is pretty useful. The Dream Studio doesn't save your images, so it's really important to save images after every generation so you don't lose them. All right, so that didn't work so well, so let's try something different. So let's do lion, casso, painting, oil, cinematic, roaring. That's pretty good. Actually, I quite a bit. Uh, it's very colorful. Climate, change, oil, paint. Thing, climped cinematic landscape. So this definitely looks like a clean painting, but it's uh, not very defined. So not a huge fan of this one, but let's save it. Let's remove climped. Let's say then go. Let's take the landscape off. This is something that was explained in the prompt guide. When you put oil painting, a lot of times it will give you an image of oil painting, which it's not something I wanted. I want the image to be oil painting. So we can fix that. To get the oil painting, you can simply add an oil painting off of your prompt. It sometimes there's an image of opening a frame to fix it. You can just rerun the prompt to use raw prompt oil painting. New York underwater oil painting Van Gogh cinematic. This doesn't look at all like New York City. It does look like a Van Gogh painting, but it's uh, not underwater. It's more of like in water. So let's uh, change New York to Manhattan flood it instead of underwater okay that's kind of cool so that looks like a city that's been flooded uh, it doesn't really look like new york city but uh it has kind of a van gogh look to it let's do some portraits let's say hermione from uh harry potter you get something kind of cool but uh, it doesn't have hermione from harry potter at all so uh, let's add harry potter to this oh that looks terrible oh those look that's scary Ooh, i would not show this to my kids yikes let's try some animals l and Picasso, colorful. This looks pretty similar to the picture of the lion that I got earlier. Cyberpunk, intricate. Let's do pencil drawing. This is kind of cool, but I didn't necessarily want this black and white. So let's do colorful. Wow, that didn't do anything. So I changed the prompt quite a bit and it pretty much gave me the same exact thing. So that's uh, pretty surprising. I like photography and there's this uh, really famous photographer from uh, 19th century called Nadar. Or Portrait style Nadar a studio. That looks pretty creepy. That does look like a Nadar image, but looks pretty creepy. Uh, businessman. I don't want a kid. This does look like a Nadar photo. The suit is not too bad. It's a little bit distorted, so you can definitely see that the proportions aren't right. This side is uh, quite good, but this side is off. But the faces look creepy. Uh, those are not good at all. Maybe we should give it. Um, some uh, more specific uh, face. So I think I need to give a specific person to uh, give me a portrait of. So let's say a portrait of Tom Cruise. This looks more like a painting than a photograph. Uh, also, his eyes are super creepy. It really doesn't do particularly well with faces so far. So let's give it a photorealistic. And also I'll give it a few more steps. So let's give it 100 steps to see if that helps. When you use more steps, it also takes a little bit longer to process. I like this picture. I don't know if we just uh, hit his uh, creepy eyes behind those sunglasses, but uh, this looks like a pretty nice uh, pencil drawing. It does not look like a photograph though. So let's save that. The steps were automatically brought back to 50. Let's do a uh, spaceship in desert. Let's, let's do Picasso again. Moody, artistic. Let's say oil painting, oil painting. It does look like oil painting. This looks more like an egg than a spaceship, but I like the image, it's kind of cool. Let's do portrait of a girl, oil painting, 
dreamy, ethereal, beautiful fantasy. Let's see what happens. Again, that's a little creepy. Um, and they gave me the oil painting. So let me remove that oil painting thing. Sometimes you get amazing results, but sometimes you get complete garbage. Here I did a portrait of a girl, dreamy, ethereal, beautiful fantasy, and I just got a blurry mess. Countryside, Let's see if it likes that. The dreamy, ethereal, beauty fantasy might give you a just too much garbage. This is actually pretty nice. Uh, so I did countryside, dreamy, ethereal, beautiful fantasy. I like the picture, but what's hilarious are all these things right here. That looks like uh, watermarks to me. This looks like a watermark from uh, Dreamstime, which sells uh, stock images. I used to sell through them as well. Countryside, let's say, let's say sunset. Let's take the dreamy out. That's pretty interesting. It gave me these artifacts again, which I'm pretty sure are watermarks. Rural landscape. This looks really nice. Uh, I don't have any of the artifacts. It has a sunset. If I submit it to this to a, a school project, I think that we're pretty impressed. As you can see, you can spend several hours playing with this um, on your own. It's really a lot of fun. And uh, since you get uh, 200 generations for free and it's super easy to sign up, I encourage everybody to try this out. You might be able to find some really cool prompts and some really cool results. If you're lost on what type of prompts to use, go back to Lexica and see what our people are using. And I'm sure uh, you'll be able to generate some really cool art. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Let's see if Stable Diffusion knows Game of Thrones. This looks like the character from Game of Thrones, but her, again, her eyes are kind of creepy. It really doesn't do a very good job with the eyes. Let's give it uh, more on the steps again. Let's give it fantasy, ethereal. Oh, I misspelled the theory also. It looks very similar to the picture below. The eyes are still creepy. We humans are really conditioned to look at eyes of any portraits. And if the eyes look off, it just does not look good. The rest of the image looks great. Her lips, her rest of the face looks great. The hair is really good, but the eyes just look creepy and it just does not look right. I'll try a pencil drawing. Again, the eyes still look weird, uh, but know, that looks pretty good. I mean, since the eyes look so weird, let's give her sunglasses. Oh, that looks terrible. It didn't give her sunglasses. It gave her like super dorky glasses. Put it in a frame. I mean, what is it doing? That's funny. I just don't, don't want her eyes in the picture because they look weird. Again, just the eyes look weird. If anybody knows how to make eyes of characters look uh, really good, let me know. Let's try like pretty eyes. Oh, still creepy. All right, give it a shot.